OSPF neighbor ship in NX OS. In this video, I'm going to show you the configuration of the OSPF in NX OS. How we can configure OSPF neighbor ship in the NX OS. It's so simple and also it's so similar to the configuration of the, uh, for example, OSPF in the iOS. How we can configure the OSPF first? The first thing that you should do for configuring OSPF on the NX OS is that you should enable the feature OSPF. Until you enable the feature OSPF, you don't have the commands of the OSPF. You should first enable the OSPF and after that you will have the uh, commands, the configuration commands of the OSPF. Don't forget, if you need to enable OSPF, you require the enterprise services license. This is the license you need to using the OSPF feature, enterprise services license. Okay. If you have this license, you can use OSPF and you can enable the feature OSPF. How we can enable, how we can configure OSPF after enabling the, the feature OSPF. It's so easy. The command is similar with the command of the iOS. I assume that this is the, uh, for example, switch, NXOS switch. And after that we have switch config. Okay, we should use the rotor OSPF command. You know that in iOS for configuring OSPF version two, we should use rotor OSPF process ID. Here, we should configure the OSPF, rotor OSPF with a tag or uh, for example, instance ID. The tag can be up to 20 character. For, exa uh, for example, you can use the tag of A, B, C, or one, two, three, every uh, character until uh, to up to 20 characters you can use. So feature rotor OSPF tag, same as the rotor OSPF one in the iOS. And then we go, we will go to the switch uh, config rotor. Here, if you want, you can configure the rotor ID. It's not mandatory, it's optional. Rotor ID is the same function, has the same function with the rotor ID in the uh, iOS. How rotor ID is selected in the, uh, for example, NXOS? The rotor ID is selected on the NXOS differently from the iOS. The first uh, priority is configuration of the administrator. If you configure rotor ID with this command, the rotor ID should be this rotor ID. This means that the manually configured rotor ID is the preferred okay, method. If you don't configure the rotor ID, the IP address of the lookback zero, if you have lookback zero, is always preferred, okay? Lookback zero is preferred. And if you don't have lookback zero, if lookback zero doesn't exist, Cisco NX OS, select the IP address for the first lookback interface in the configuration. For example, assume that I configured lookback to two at the first, uh, for example, uh, lookback interface I configured, the IP address of this lookback is the rotor ID. Let me to review. First, the first priority is manually configured rotor ID. If you didn't configure the rotor ID manually, the IP address of the lookback zero interface is the rotor ID. If you don't have lookback zero, if the lookback zero doesn't exist, the IP address of the first lookback interface configured, okay, is the rotor ID. And if totally we don't have lookback interface, if no lookback interface exists, Cisco NXOS select the IP address for the first physical interface in the configuration. For example, ETH11, ETH12, okay? First physical interface. Uh, finally, manually configured is the first method. Lookback zero is the second. Other lookbacks, the first other lookbacks is the next method. And finally, the first non-lookback interface should be selected, should be used for the rotor ID. Okay, it's preferred, it's best practice that you configure the rotor ID yourself. This is the second command. This command is optional. You don't uh, 
need to configure these commands and this is not mandatory it's recommended okay let me to right here this is the optional command okay also the adjacency in the uh, nx os okay by default the logging adjacency by default not enabled if you want to enable the log adjacency change you should configure it for example with this command log adjacency change okay and if you uh, want to see the detail you can use the log adjacency change detail by default this is disabled if you want to see the logging the adjacency logs you should enable the log adjacency change okay now we have we learn about three command in the ospf rotor ospf tag here rotor id and log adjacency change but the important command that you should configure to enabling ospf on in, on the interface is that you should first go to the interface mode selecting the interface 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 name and here after we are in the interface mode we should enable ospf in this interface with the command ip rotor ospf let me to show you switch config if okay the command is ip rotor ospf not ip ospf such as ios ip rotor ospf then you should mention the tag the tag you configured before and then okay you should configure the area area id the area can be configured in decimal form uh, format okay or uh, for example in four decimal uh, or in dotted decimal notation if you want you can configure for example ip rotor ospf a area zero or ip rotor ospf a area zero dot zero dot zero dot zero okay but when you are using the show commands every time you will see the dotted decimal notation okay this is the initial configuration this is the simplest form of configuration and the monitoring command is so similar with the monitoring commands in the ios you can use these commands for example if you want to see about the ospf enabled interface you can use show ip ospf interface and if you want you can use the interface name and also brief keyboard the same as the ios if you want you can if you want to see the neighbors ospf neighbors you can use show ip ospf neighbors okay and also we have the option of detail also we have the show ip ospf database for uh, monitoring the lsdb and also we can use the show ip root ospf for uh, checking the routing table for example show ip root with the ospf keyword okay don't forget you should mention here the tag for example ospf a to see the routes received from uh, this process of the ospf let me to configure one example and learning more about the ospf configuration in the nxos uh, starting from the nxos one this is nxos one first we should configure the interface of the switch the host name is switch one okay and then we have interface eth11 this interface the ip address of this interface as you can see in the figure is 10121 slash 24 and if, uh, you know that we should enable this interface with the uh, no shutdown okay and after that i enabled before this interface with the no switch port command don't forget to enabling the to a uh, rotate port on this interface because you know that by default the switch interface uh, interfaces are in switch port mode and you can configure ip address on them and also we have another interface interface loopback zero the ip address of this interface is quad one quad two five five means quad one slash 32 let me uh, first check the interfaces in the switch one show ip interface brief as you can see now we have two interface interface ethernet one one and also look back zero with this ip addresses and you can see that interfaces status now is up very good let's go to the nxos2 the switch2 conf d host name 
a switch to interface ETH11. Okay, first we should enable the rotate port or disabling the switch port on this interface. 